Hi, this is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society, and I'm going to talk to you just a short time this afternoon about the problem that this young lady, and I'll show you in a minute, has. She's a mouth breather, she's a tongue thruster, and she's also a thumb sucker. And uh, you can see the result of this and show you some things that we uh, do. We make our own appliances. I have uh, two ladies there that make them and also I, at one time I had a, a, a young man that we trained to do uh, the appliances but he's gone and we have these two ladies that make nearly everything uh, we put in. So let's uh, go in here and and see. I'll show you this young lady, a uh, nice little girl, and she's very cooperative and very uh, happy uh, when we put all this stuff in her mouth. It's uh, it's hard to think that uh, she would be that uh, pleasant to deal with, but she is. And uh, you can see we've gained a little excess vertical down here on the face you just kind of look at it and you see that this distance is a little bit more than this distance from here to the eyebrows a little up to there so we probably just a small amount but we're getting to this case whereas if we can correct the function she will grow out really looking uh, quite good and uh, so that's what we're our objective for doing this case would be now if we take a look at the side the chin is out is as she opens wider the chin goes back if we close this a little bit the chin will come forward and she's protruding out there so from the thumb uh, Prizes over these teeth, pushing them, pushing them out like that, and so we're going to try to break these habits and talk with her about stopping some of these things. And I'll show you what we put in the mouth, you know, to try to uh, break these habits. Uh, Why don't you look at her, and she uh, pushes her tongue up there like that when she swallows. She push that tongue right in that spot. Of course, when she uh, swallows, she usually doesn't have a thumb in there, but maybe she does part of the time. But it's caused an open bite and is also pushing these teeth out, the bone structure and everything, and it makes this part of the facial structure look like it's protruding out a lot further uh, than the other part of it so if you look at this is this is out too far and this lines up pretty much with the facial structure so this is coming out here from the uh, pressure of the tongue and the thumb pushing on that so we're going to try to break these habits and see if we can get her in a more normal situation here all right, uh, it's from the side, it looks like that. It's not, it's, it's class two, but not, not a bad situation to deal with. And, uh, I don't know from this point, it looks like we've got some kind of ligaments, uh, problem there. We may have to work on that too. Uh, now, from this side, the same, uh, problem. We've lost or haven't gotten the lateral tooth come, come in yet. But it's more of the class one. You see these teeth are out in front of that. So the, this side is more class one than the other side is. Uh, now, looking at it from up above, uh, you can see these teeth are a little bit ahead. I said cuspids is out ahead of this one over here so it's kind of turned you look at the palate it's kind of turned to it right there 
and that's probably developing because he's sucking the thumb on one, one side uh, or the other. Looks like this one that she may be putting the left thumb in the mouth right there, and it uh, changes that shape. So we're going to try to break all this habit. And if you look in the, this one, the lower teeth uh, aren't affected that much, except that she's a mouth breather, and the tongue stays down here in the lower arch, and she breathes over the top of the tongue, and it widens the lower arch more than it widens the upper arch and doesn't develop the airway good. So uh, when you've got a, a tongue thruster, you, you really need to get the airway open and get the child or the person breathing through their nose the first thing out to try to break that. So we're going to hit them all at once, really, but we'll be working on trying to get the uh, airway cleared. It's a necessary thing to go. So we put uh, the bands on these lower front teeth and salt spot weld and salt of these little uh, old three old wires. We've got a whole video on this if you want to look at those and show you how to make these. And we fix this to counteract the tongue to keep it from going through here. And at the same time, we've also put a palatal separator in and we didn't attach the leg to these deciduous teeth. We just moved this leg out to be an interference for the thumb when we put it in there. We look at it from a, a mirror. I'll put a mirror back in here and choose a picture of that and show it to you uh, on this. Now, we put this spring in between the teeth because most of your bone structures right in this part of the mouth. So we put spring in here until we get this separated. Then once we get it separated good really hard, then we're going to pull these teeth together with this elastic chain right there. And we've got this deal to stop the tongue. And we've got the other thing. Uh, if she puts the thumb in there to suck it, it's going to be really uh, uneasy. It's going to be poked by these deals, and uh, it'll also be bumped with these bars that come across there, and it's hard to get suction on it. We get a vacuum in there to suck it, and we're going to talk to her about it, and maybe just having some uh, reminder to get your thumb out of there. You know, we'll talk to the young lady and show her what it's, it's doing to her mouth, and what it's doing to her looks and everything, and then get her on your side, and then try from there. Don't, don't try to uh, buck them. So you know, if you want to, I can't do anything to stop this, but we can do something to remind you quite vividly to get your thumb out of there, to keep your thumb out, then we can help you and do something to you. So, uh, Get the patient on your side if you possibly can. And she's a nice little girl, and I think we got on her side. And this orange is started up like this, you know, and I think it just gradually comes on down. I don't show the finishing of the case, just the appliance for the list that we uh, use here. And the same thing with the on that side. Here is the palatal separator that we put in, and there's this spring, and we open this gap up, you see, and we open this, and this is banded and cemented, and it's pushing this out, and we're bringing the roots of the teeth out. These two deciduous teeth don't have much root on them at all, so we took that bar and bring it out where it interferes with the thumb when it goes in there. So we've got a palatal separator and a tongue, I mean a thumb aggravator, 
if you want to call it that, uh, to try to help the reminder to take the thing out. Now this picture down here is, see we, uh, this is a low large, and we put a mirror up in here, uh, up in this part, and we're shooting the picture of the mirror, and it's going to give us, like we're looking straight at it right there. Uh, you folks that have really been into orthodontics, you'd be bored to death about uh, some of the things I keep talking about if you're doing them and you know it. And, uh, but uh, we never know exactly what, uh, how much the people that look at these know. So we have to try to cover a lot of stuff here uh, that's not necessary for somebody that's been doing this a long time. Uh, all right, things are going our way and look pretty good. Now we've separated the palette, so we take this off and put this elastic chain and we'll close these teeth together and you can keep the palette going out. And these teeth are further out. The, when we first started, the lower arch was much wider than the upper arch and that causes, if it gets a lot worse, that that they shift their jaw to one side or the other, and she was shifting, shifting a little bit by putting the thumb, and it looked like she was using her left thumb, and it kind of curved this around, and it seems to be lining up pretty good at this point. Uh, we'll go there and see what... I've got a bad picture right there. This this side looks okay, and that's out of focus. I'm sorry that these slides were made back when you had to send the pictures off to get them made, and uh, we couldn't change it. Now here's the device in the mouth with the separator open this much, you see, and we've got the diastema up here. This closed up, we just closed that space up after it was separated. And the tongue, I mean the thumb irritant is uh, sticking down here and we have those points on the lower arch. This is not the lower arch that you're looking at, it's the uh, upper arch. And so this works. Now she's broken off a couple of these things, but it's still working. And you see the tongue is fitting in there uh, fine. And when she swallows, it goes up into the roof of the mouth. Now, getting them to breathe through the nose is the most important thing you can do. I feel like that's very important because you, you, your nose heats the air up to body temperature or tries to. And it humidifies it, and it purifies it, or cleans out a, a lot of the junk, and, and gets in the cilia, and it's fed back into the throat, and you swallow the stuff, it doesn't hurt the stomach, you know. And uh, this, the nerve, the nose kind of acts like a carburetor, and it gets the air out into the cilia of the lungs much better, and so the blood oxygen level goes up. And that's much better. And nitrogen oxide is given off by the, the sinuses and is fed into the air going in through the, through the nose. And this nitrogen oxide softens the veins. It helps everything, the, the uh, lungs, and it even helps the heart. And all this, if you can get them breathing, uh, correctly, that is a very important, important thing. And then, uh, your jaw, you don't know, shift it over to one side or the other. You see a lot of crossbites and they're brought about a big majority of them by mouth breathing. Because your tongue has to be in here and it widens these teeth out. I don't care what you uh, think the tongue may not do that, but it does. You know, widen it out. And it'll be bigger than the upper arch. It doesn't go up in the 
pallet so the pallet doesn't get pushed out. And after a while, the pallet, I've seen kids that actually the uh, maxillary uh, arch would fit inside the lower arch, you know, or the, the cusp of the tick would be in here when it's supposed to be out on the outside of the lower arch. And uh, I know about this because I've been a mouth breather and got so many allergies and I bite my cheek because the, the molars hit almost even in here in this bite. You bite your cheek. So anyway, correcting function is one of the best things you can do for a person. And you need to do it early. You don't want to sit around and wait till they're 12 or 14 years old to go in and start the orthodontics that hadn't even looked at them before. You need to go in there early and correct this function. And then the person will grow and the teeth will, if they uh, swallow correctly and breathe correctly, their chances of them coming in pretty straight are very good. Otherwise, you've got a problem and you've got to correct that function if you possibly can, very early. Uh, let's see, I don't know how many more slides I've got on, on the case. Now this is a three. Here's the young lady. Uh, she was always very happy. It looks like we've got her face now looking about the same. You know, when we started, it looked like this was back and this was out right here. But I think we're uh, whipping the problem and then this vertical dimension which is slightly high will balance out after a few years of correct function or just a short time as young as she is uh, that will happen and uh, there is a pretty young lady now that's the uh, tongue thrust appliance that we put in we just had a whole slew of low anterior bands when we went into the brackets and we used them that way and uh, that is an effective way and I'll put these things on even a medical doctor who uh, was still a tongue twist and had his, had his teeth straightened by a good orthodontist and it has, they went, went the pot on him and so we put these on, so we put those on a lot of people, and you think they butcher their tongue or something. And I told him, let me tell you, I want to know exactly what happens in you. He said, my tongue went up there about twice and hit that thing, and then it just wouldn't go up there anymore. You don't have to tell him, the tongue is pretty smart, and it stays back. But you need to fix the airway before you try to fix the tongue in here because they need to be able to breathe through their nose. If they're breathing through their mouth, they're going to have to stick the tongue down here and breathe over the top of it. And that's hard to correct a tongue thrust and still have a breathing problem, a bad problem. So that uh, makes a rough deal for us with, with allergies that you I just can't get rid of these allergies, and uh, that's that makes it a difficult task to do. Uh, and that's the alpha separator when we had the spring on it. Um, that was where we opened it. We had the spring, and we took the spring off and it pulled that together. And we got a lot of few duplications here. Um, Come through that pretty quick. All right, that's the end of the slides that I had. I guess those slides were just stuck on there. Appreciate you watching this, but if you're treating young children, you need to know these things. Uh, if you don't, you just can't possibly do it right. So I appreciate you watching it, and I hope that. Uh, you're able to treat uh, young people, and then there are a lot of adults 
in the tongue thrusters and need their palate separated too. So I'll uh, close out here and uh, thank you for watching. We'll, so we'll see you later. Bye bye.